Hi everyone, my name is Eli Schilling. I'm a product manager for Oracle Cloud. And today we're gonna to spend some time talking about the DevOps methodology. I wanted to hopefully dispel some common uh, misunderstandings and make sure that we're all talking about the same set of tools and processes here when it comes to delivering code in a rapid cloud-oriented, cloud-native fashion. So we're really gonna focus on three different areas here as part of this methodology. The first, of course, is going to be the people. And just as it sounds, we typically have a team comprised of developers and operations folks, oftentimes QA and other teams get involved, but we want to focus on the namesake here, which is dev and ops, hence the DevOps methodology. Uh, in a traditional organization, oftentimes these are two separate independent teams. We have developers writing code, uh, delivering features and bug fixes and, and changes to our application. We then have our op operations folks who are managing and operating or running that code in a live production environment. Uh, some folks might even tend to use the analogy that we just toss things over the wall and we hope that everything comes together on the other side of that wall. So the people portion of DevOps is really about eliminating that wall. It's a cultural shift where we want to break that down, whether we're combining teams to be one cohesive unit, whether we're modifying or enhancing our communication strategy to eliminate a lot of those challenges that usually unfold or, or present themselves due to a lack of communication or understanding between these two teams. So the first thing we have to address is the people. Make sure that uh, the developers, the operations team are working together as one cohesive unit. Now the next piece of this is process. And the process portion tends to rely fairly heavily on the Agile methodology uh, that you may be familiar with or that we actually discussed in a previous video. And the process is really about creating this, this continuous loop, this infinity loop or figure eight, uh, where we simply iterate repetitively to plan, build, deliver, test, and monitor our infrastructure. So we're gonna start here with the process. The first thing we do is we plan. What is it that we wanna do and that we wanna deliver? Uh, we're gonna take that plan, we'll move it into the code phase. We're gonna write some code, we'll do some basic testing. All right, after we've written some code, we'll do the standard build process. So compile or generate some sort of deliverable artifact as part of that. We'll move from build to the next test phase or the more official test phase where we potentially run load testing, regression testing, additional user acceptance testing, and so on. So once we have tested the code, we're ready to go ahead and release So that's uh, basically marking that package readily available for uh, deployment to production. So we'll go ahead and deploy that next. So we're gonna go ahead and operate the code at this point. And then finally monitor. And where does that bring us? Right back to the planning phase. So as we go through this cycle of build, test, release, deploy, operate in production, continuously monitor. Throughout this process, we tend to identify additional opportunities uh, to enhance our application, to improve performance, improve reliability, and all of that simply feeds back to the planning phase where we decide what to work on next. And then we build and we move through this process again continuously until we have our final end goal achieved. So in addition to people and process, we of course need to focus on the technology. So within this methodology, we want to make sure we utilize the right technology that not only enables the, the culture and the communication we're looking for on the people side, but helps facilitate and simplify the entire process flow of building, testing, deploying, releasing, and delivering code uh, or software within our application ecosystem. Now on the technology stack, 
there's a few different layers that we want to think about delivering or, or utilizing to construct this end-to-end -end or to facilitate this end-to-end -end DevOps methodology. One of the first pieces here is going to be source control. Now we need to make sure that all the code we're writing is stored in a central repository that has access control, audit control. So we want to make sure that all of our folks have access to the central repository that we can manage and monitor what's happening in the ecosystem here. Now the next piece is going to be some sort of pipeline or orchestration tool. So we can think about pipeline slash orchestration. What that's going to do for us is allow us to tie many or all of these individual components together into a stream of continu uh, continuous function, uh, allowing us to define the sequence of events, what happens if any one of these phases were to unfortunately fail, how do we respond, react, and move forward. So a, a good pipeline or orchestration tool will help us to define and execute all of these steps or all of the phases in this process flow. Now the next piece, potentially, uh, infrastructure as code, or IAC, as often is uh, abbreviated. Now infrastructure as code is going to help us with uh, potentially the test phase, the deployment phase, and possibly even the operate phase. So this is where we actually get to write code that will provision our infrastructure or modify existing infrastructure in response to an application code change. Infrastructure as code tools like Terraform are very popular, especially in the test phase, because that gives us the ability to generate test environments on the fly, deploy code, test code, and then destroy the environment. Now, a couple more tools to think about here. Configuration management. So configuration management tools give us the ability to define and control configuration throughout our environment, from the uh, control files to the uh, password distribution, database configuration. We're able to define what that looks like and enforce it across the environment with the right toolkit, the right tool here. Monitoring is, of course, critical. selecting the right monitoring tool to ensure that we can monitor the deployment, the post go live, the performance, monitor the log files for potential errors. We need as much visibility as we can uh, in order to ensure that we have completed a successful delivery of the application code and that it continues to function properly once in production. And last but certainly not least, testing tools. So we're not going to do this all by hand. We need some sort of mechanism to automatically perform load testing, uh, automatically perform re uh, regression testing, and other various activities to ensure that this code we write, this artifact we build, is bulletproof before we eventually push it into our production environment. So there it is, folks. The DevOps methodology, which of course consists of people, process, and technology. The three of those things combined enable us to continuously and repeatedly deliver bug-free, high-performant code into our application environment. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day.